Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Testing one two three.
Good morning, chat. For very late today. I, for that, I apologize. 
sad shake, kind of wondering if I should even bother it this morning. It's kind of ironic, I set up to show a 10. Good morning, Tear Wolf. I set up to show up at 10 in the morning, specifically to avoid this from happening, but I was up until 4 last night, which kind of defeated the point, honestly. And it felt like a waste, too, because much of the time of yesterday's stream was kind of spent just fighting against garbage servers. I don't know why I even bothered. Sometimes you kind of need to know when you're at your lowest end to determine whether you want to keep going or not. I'm sure some people will find it entertaining in post, because they always do, but, you know. Right now, I'm kind of half wondering whether or not I should actually play lo-fi music. I'm kind of tired of Twitch just panic muting anything I play in the background, even if it is royalty-free. It's getting kind of fucking annoying, to be honest. I did say I was going to do some storytelling today and some writing. I still got that stuff all set up. I'm not sure... It's been a while since I've done any creative writing outside of... Well, outside of that ARG stuff that you all saw. So I'm mainly here if we have a large enough crowd or... We wouldn't even need really a large enough crowd, you just... We're here, aren't we? Um... If you have any questions, um, or qu any questions about all that transpired in the past week or so, feel free to field them and I'll answer. Otherwise, the hardest part of writing ends up, off and ends up being just staring at a blank screen and actually putting words to paper. Sometimes you could even force yourself to do to start this process, but you'll feel awkward during the whole thing, and it will feel like you're just kind of going through the motions. But even if it, that is the case, you kind of even if it feels kind of wobbly, it's basically the equivalent of trying to learn to stand for the first time. And very few people ever just kind of get straight to it. I just woke up after a long work week. You should be energized. Oh, that's good to hear. I, meanwhile, have had a lot on my plate. This has not been a good week. I'm a combination of all things right now. And as is usual, when stuff like this happens, the overriding thing that I would like to do more often than not, tends to be wanting to just go back to bed and not wake up. It's going to seem awful in post-production, or probably even right now, not having any sound in the background except that of my voice, but... I don't really don't feel like fucking with Twitch right now, with regard to you. Whether you're going to mute something or not. So, if anyone has any prompts for something for me to write, I'm all ears. Otherwise, I'm just going to go search for random Tumblr prompts. This one's clearly based off Skyrim, clearly making fun of Skyrim. 
In the midst of combat, the villain watches in terror as the hero swallows an entire roast chicken, two cheese wheels, and a whole watermelon at once. There's no watermelon, or roast chicken for that matter, in Skyrim. But the cheese wheel thing is such, such an oft, an oft quoted reference to not just Skyrim, I think. I think it's in the other Elder Scrolls games as well. Which is weird too because they weigh like a pound. Like hell, are you gonna be those things just weigh too much. I mean, it's going to be more economical to carry potions and other other health items around. But when you're out scavenging, and since base Skyrim is kind of fucky with inventory space and doesn't penalize you all that much until after you add survival mods, you could just carry a lot of random food that you just took off the ground and eat that I suppose and among those are cheese wheels I'm gonna be writing from the villain's perspective more or less you know what I don't think I mind being muted for the segments where I'm not actually talking. The problem is, the whole wheel? We were sure pigs in the middle ages. You bet. The entire wheel. The, in, the entire wheel. That's as many as... That's as many as... Uh, that's as many as two halves. And that's terrible. Or is it a quarter? I mean, I've seen cheese wheels in real life, but I've never seen them, like, divided for actual edible consumption. They're usually... I know that they're made into wheels to be easier to carry around and to, like, transport and stuff, right? The crushing of bone, flesh, and sinew sang like poetic hymns to Gargoranath, the white dragon, as he apart the hapless human's sword arm, sting arm, and spat it asunder. Normally, The greater dragon Tremble, mortal! The inferior tongue. Bow ye to your betters, and will yet grant the mercy of 
Uh, sweet death. Er, swift death. So it's mighty and expected victory. How did the mortal react to the dragon slur of sweet death? You're about to find out, actually. <laughs> uh, watch and be amazed. Well, you don't need to be amazed, but you'll see what it means. You'll see in, like, literally the next paragraph. <laughs> A, the mighty dragon allowed itself a deep, thrumming laugh. Before looking downward at the puny human to gaze upon its insurmountable fear, only to find that said human was crouched over its bag, rooting away at its insides with its lone arm, paying absolutely no heed to either the dragon or its missing arm. Er... The dragon spake. Smoke filtering smoke gently escaping its chiseled scaled lips. Perhaps I did not make myself clear enough for your inferior ears, the dragon said. I said, I asked you to bow to your betters so that I may grant the mercy of a sweet the dragon caught itself swift death swift as in quickly fast immediate Dragon's mouth curled into a self-satisfied grin. He loved his more than textbook knowledge of human or of human vocabulary. 
Not that dragon textbooks were all that long to begin with. Instead of responding, said human eventually took said human took or instead of responding the dragon watched as said human instead of responding took the entirety of the knapsack and dumped it and dumped its contents onto the ground. At first, a few items of little worth fell out, including an entire bundle of hay and prematurely grown carrots, but it didn't stop there. Contents of the bag quickly covered the ground surrounding the human's feet. Random farming equipment and even chess pieces followed suit, bouncing off of those items already on the ground and rolling away down the ruined streets. As I read, I am beckoned by the desperation of a hungry feeling leaving to my desk. Excuse me for a bit. No problem. Take your time. The dragon blinked as this continued for some time. He almost didn't catch the several weapons and clearly magical items tumble tumble out in the process transfixed as he was by the sheer amount of garb of garbage that escaped the pack's vast innards. Eventually, the pack did contents however and with it the dragon breathed a sigh of relief snorting a short belch of flame Ig ignited a few scrolls of little worth that had rolled to its feet. Unforgotten or com forgotten by the human, by the armless human. Morning reversed. Um, I just found a random prompt off Tumblr and I just started writing off of it.
The prompt that I found was, in the midst of combat, the villain watches in terror as the human swallows an entire roast chicken, two cheese wheels, and a whole watermelon at once. And so far, it's about a dragon which has just ripped off the arm of his human, gave a evil speech, and then watched as the human both ignored it and then started to dump everything out of its backpack for some reason. At last, the dragon said. So am I heading an addendum in a way? Um, I wouldn't call it an addendum. Basically on Tumblr, there's this thing where their entire blogs are just devoted to posting prompts. And people take those prompts to do some creative writing of their own and attach it. It's something that I used to do all the time on my previous blogs that was very helpful for world building and I turned some of those into short stories that I then linked on my blog for people to read to give an idea to also to give an idea of my style at the time and also to kind of gently introduce them into my fictional worlds. I was hoping to actually read some of them today if we had some if we had a decent turnout. I still could if you all would be interested in listening to some of my stories. Yeah. A pending, I guess, would make more sense in this context. Anyway, at last the dragon said, um, eyeing how, how, um, considerate of you to clean yourself. Prior to co to consumption, the dragon spoke with a lot growl, which with a low half growl, half laugh. I should your digestion will be all the much smooth what are you doing the human continued to ignore Gargoranath and searched through the numerous for something. The dragon snarled. It was obvious to him that the human was looking for a weapon of some time.
He reared on his hind legs and prepared to pounce. Not wanting to But as he did a short leap, he watched as the human clamped its meaty remaining fingers onto an enormous wheel of cheese. Doth the human stuff his ears with corks? Dragon must be getting peeved. <laughs> Indeed, this is certainly a question, uh, an important question. The dra even to setting aside that the dragon is quite used to humans quaking in fear and being re rendered speechless, never before has the dragon Gargonoth, or is it Gargoronoth? Encountered such a, hu a human of such bravery, such as this, such as this one, and we are unfortunately going to find out the true horror of why this is the case. The dragon skid to a stop, nearly tripping itself upon the minor mound of both treasure and garbage that had accumulated on the ground before him. The human reached up or the human rose to a uh, standing position, but only seemed to stare forward and with a mighty and with a mighty chomp consumes the entire tea of the cheese wheel in one bite. The dragon blinked. The dragon blinked again. The dragon blinked a third time. And saw an empty tankard of ale in the human's remaining hand. L liquid dripped from the tankard and beneath the human the dragon saw at least three recently consumed apple apples only their cores remaining are you the dragon started. What? His eyes squinting. Are you. Is this what humans refer to as. Marinade? The dragon said. Trying to leave. It's confusion. 
That's not how you spell a leave. Really? Relieve? Oh, fine. We'll use relief. It's confusion. With humor. That was until he saw the... Oh, that was until he... No. He watched as the human gripped a watermelon easily the same size as a cow's skull and eliminated half of it with an impossibly a large bite. The rind crunched loudly under unseen lips. The pink juices of the fruit leaking out of the opening underneath the human's helm, vaguely resembling the blood of a leaking the blood from a famished hound's maw. Vaguely resembling blood leaking from a famished hound's maw as they tore into prey. It was when the human suddenly produced an entire roast bird which was still this, which was still steaming as if recently prepared and swallowed one of its legs in a single that the dragon began to scream internally. I am imagining the voice of an Alan Rickman while I'm becoming from the dragon's messaging. Of course, it's Skyrim Universe, I presume. Mm -hmm. Or a, a very loosely Skyrim Universe uh, parody. So terrible was the terrible Gargor Granat's terror that by the time he noticed that the humans once disarmed arm had regrown itself. He was vastly or slowly. 
Thank you for the headpad, Neko. How are you doing today? Welcome to the stream. Uh, sorry, Vastly or Snowy in reference to what, Tyrwolf? I'm okay. Not doing the best to be today, Neko. Just kind of had a late wake up. I was kind of partly thinking about canceling this morning's stream, to be honest. Um, I'm going to say a little bit of both. Tear Wolf, because I imagine I didn't write this in here, but I imagined that every time the uh, human took a bite, a part of the limb would just regrow, it would just like pop into existence. Kind of like uh, how limbs get depicted as regrowing in the Dragon Ball Z universe, except um, in parts as opposed to all at once. Six feet in the air. His frantic wings beating the ground. His frantic wings billowing the collected refuse of the human's pack all over the place. Scattering Bills of sale. Stolen private notes. And tales of... Horror Queen. Asunder. Pardon me if you're intervening, just keep me alive. Oh, no problem. It's I don't mind people um, asking questions and chatting over the course of this. Over the course of me writing all this up, it makes it a lot easier, to be honest. Although, I do feel myself starting to burn out, and that's not a good sign, given that it's only been an hour. I guess that's just how it is sometimes, right? We will not speak of this human. The dragon roared as it reached keep height. I will not speak of you. You will not speak of me. It is equivalent. In a way, Gargoranath was not incorrect. He wouldn't speak again. But he did not realize this as a As a storm of air of arrows it lodged into both of his wings as a storm of
There we go. And that's it. R.I.P. Gargoranath. You are certainly one of many and one of many dragons on the way to the dra on to the way to the uh, legally distinct um, dragonkins way to conquer the land of uh, I don't fucking know um, Chadrim. It's been a while since I've written anything like this. Oh my god, that's terrible. My eyes are burning. Woo! I'm gonna go post this on Tumblr now. I don't remember any of the tags I used to use for Tumblr. Here we go. Hog. It's been a long time since I got to write something like that. You definitely offer an articulate vocabulary I envy. Uh, well, thank you. It's just something that you pick up over years of reading and writing. A vocabulary is kind of all over the place. It's kind of difficult sometimes for people to even pick up on where I'm from because I mix slang from everywhere. Some of the words I use are also fairly out of date or fairly old, and I mostly use them because I like the way they roll off the tongue. Like, for example, the word apoplectic. That's such an ancient word. A lot of people have to look that up, that one up. It's all it is. It's just a fancy word, which means... Um, it, I think its original use was to convulse, to go into convulsions. But it's often used as a synonym for anger, for extreme anger. If someone's apoplectic, they're literally so angry that they're going to convulsions, basically. I think I read it the first time I've ever seen that word used was in a webcomic, in fact. That's how I translated it, anyway. Um, I translated it in the context of the story that I was reading. I translated it as the person going super angry. But I could be wrong. Maybe they weren't actually going super angry and maybe they were just in such severe shock that they are going into convulsions. Going into going into shock, basically. In fact, that definition is probably more accurate than the way I translated it, but um, 
I don't know. I think I think it's personally kind of funny to imagine someone being so angry that they go into convulsions. I also like the word apoplectic because it kind of sounds like when I first read the word apoplectic and its definition, I imagined it as oh god. <laughs> Here, well, thank you very much for the thank you very much for the sub. Um, I apologize for the ads. Three minutes. It's they've been set to three minutes now. You sub at tier one. Um, where did where was they cut off? Sorry, this is gonna go on for a while. I'm glad the sound effects of YouTube Plus work again. Thirty seconds ago. Damn it. Um, I was just saying how. I'm pretty sure apoplectic refers to is not doesn't necessarily mean that someone's getting ex exceptionally angry. I'm pretty sure it refers to them going to convulsions. Um, and I think that I mistranslated the word when I read it in the webcomic that I first saw it in. They probably meant that someone was going into a state of shock from being so upset as opposed to a state of anger. But I imagined it the equivalent of hives. Or the equivalent of someone's veins bulging out. And usually that's associated with someone getting exceedingly angry. And I thought that was funny. That's why I chose in my mind to define apoplectic as someone being exceedingly angry. When it probably meant something else. Because yes, even if you're a native speaker of English. We end up defining and using these words differently than how they're probably intended. I guess that's a huge part of language changing, huh? Don't mind me, just giving myself a hydrate redeem. Shall I go ahead and reread the entire story from scratch for those of you who had either just wall walked in or um, were in and out as I was writing this uh, short story, this uh, short note? What say you, chat? I have been writing a light novel for a dream medieval Japanese fantasy RPG project chapter by chapter. I'm wondering if you could proofread it, edit it if you need content other day. It depends on the length. Normally, I don't accept requests to edit people's work anymore because I cannot in good conscience get them done in a timely manner. Because for me, editing is not a matter of just putting in through a word processor and changing and correcting a few spellings and stuff here. Um, when I edit things, it's I basically do so like an English professor. I go through the whole thing, I analyze um, the hell out of the key talking points, the uh, like basically try to get a, get a feel for uh, what your influences may or may not have been, what point you're trying to make, looking for areas of improvement, how sense, how certain sentences can be tightened, how vocabulary can be greatly improved, how the entire thing can be streamlined for readability. And I do this automatically. It's just, it's not something I really have active control over because I because that's just how my brain works to be honest. So there have been a couple times where other writing peer peers and friends have sent me entire like novels and stuff, and 
I have a hard time going through them to try and just for the purpose of reading them because even because even if I try to force myself to just read it and give a brief summary of it when the last time I tried to do that I like told myself oh I'm going to do this very quickly and just give them a very quick thing and that quick thing ended up being three pages worth <laughs> And I was still not satisfied with it because there was always something I could go back and talk about and extrapolate on. If it's something like 500 or 1,000 words, I'd probably be able to do it in a timely manner and it'd probably take up a couple hours of stream. But, um... I can't, in good conscience, like, really do stuff like that like I used to. It's also the same reason why I don't commission editing services anymore, because... Yeah, gotcha. It was in case you needed something to work with, but you seem good enough in that department. I mean... I'm not trying... I, I hope I wasn't, like, insulting in that regard. It's just I... I've tried it before, and it always becomes a mess, and I don't want to make people weight or anything and you know okay well, I mean that's just basically my take on it like it's it's difficult you know now if you had something more specific like let's say you had a string of dialogue between a couple characters and you had a specific question like is there a way I can make this flow better or can I it do the characters does the characters exchange sound natural and are there way are there areas for improvement? I could totally do something very specific like that, no problem. But I can't just do like here hey, here's my work, can you take a look, quick look at it and give me your thoughts on it? It's that's going to that's gonna take forever. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. This is not a common this is not an uncommon thing to uncommon thing either. There's some other writers that people look at them and are like, "Hey, I really like your work. Can you look at my work and give me and um talk about or talk about?" And it's like and some of them supposedly receive so many countries, so many submissions to that effect that they end up just trying, they end up just having to tell people a flat no without any explanation. And I feel bad because I understand where they're coming from, even though to outsiders it may seem rude or like just really short. But there's a reason for that. And for them, it's a place of. People don't respect their boundaries and just send them their stuff without bothering to think about, you know, the writer's time or the writer's ability to tear something apart in a manner that is understandable. And for me, it's less about that. It's more a matter of I don't want to waste people's time because... I'm just kind of been there, done that. I'm tired of telling people I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to. It, I'm going to get to it, and then months and months later, I realize that I never got to it, and I feel terrible because it's not a matter of not wanting to. It's a matter of, and I don't want to like throw mental illness or whatever under under the bus because that's also a shitty thing to do too. It's just I don't know. The best thing to do for people if they're if they're like if they have some stuff and there's like a break in the stream where I clearly don't have anything else to provide and I'm just like twiddling my thumbs, um, literally just be like, just like grab a clip. Yes, yes, we're gonna use Twitch terms for this to expedite uh, my explanation. Get like a clip of um what it is that you would like to have read over and I'll look it over and if it's something I feel like I can do in a very timely manner in a very short period of time then I'll right then and there go ahead and just 
read it and review it for you because why not? And of course, you have to be the kind of person that wouldn't mind having your work critiqued. I'm not an asshole about these things and I'm not going to just flat out insult stuff because that's not constructive. But I, the other reason why I'm kind of on the edge about editing people's work is because I can come off as cruel sometimes. Um, I'll try not to be, but I can be harsh uh, because that's pretty much how my own writing was raised. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's difficult because with any form of art, you one of the largest hurdles is you need to get over cringing at your own work. Like even looking over this right now, I can tell you right now, I know it's kind. Of, I I just kind of shat this out over the course of the past hour, and I would not count this among my best works at all. This is just a haha funny type stuff. That's how it is. Um, I can't believe I just also contradicted myself too. I literally just spent the past like monologue talking about why I don't accept submissions for editing, even from fr close friends, only to so only to go out and say, "Oh, well, you see, if you do want me to do something like that anyway, here's what you do." <laughs> A cult is about to sacrifice a child in the name of their dark god. That's when the deity shows up and says, People, my house is teeming with these kids who keep sending me. It would please me more if you raised them yourselves in a responsible manner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god, that's so good. And on that note, those so-called virgins that you've been... And on that note, those so-called virgins you keep sending me, the Dark God, which appeared as Mervis called as an unshaven man with bloodshot eyes, a dirty bathroom, flip-offs, a beer belly, and stress balding, said with the most exaggerated air quotes known to man at that time, for man had not yet understood the concept of air quotes. I don't know how you how your selection process works but but either those virgins are anything but or they are the most or they or they come from the most degenerate 
by default, planes of existence imaginable. He gently scratched scratched his goatee. Anyway, stop sending sending me children. I will not be responsible for your lack of faith in your parenting skills. It's not often that I counter a creative writing stream, so your presentation was worth intrigue. I'm glad you thought so. There's actually a few of us on YouTuber space here on Twitch that do writing streams, believe it or not. Which I totally did not expect at all, to be honest. It's certainly wild to discover, for sure. The dark, the decidedly not so dark deity snapped his fingers and vanished in a puff of black light. The cult members looked from From our uh, looked from side to side the one holding the holding a knife caked in virgin took to cutting the ropes which held their latest hapless victim on the summoning circle. All right, Heather, start sweeping the floors. The cultist said, Starting tomorrow, you're paying rent. You're paying rent. That's all I got. What's the name of that one actor? Jeff Bridges.
What is this a hug about for before me? What's wrong? Do you not enjoy my form? Blah. Anyway, you saw nothing. You, you, you saw nothing of the sort. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. No, caught in nothing, K. In nothing, K. How are you doing today, Sar? Still sick? Unfortunate. I hope you I hope you don't have COVID and if you or if you do, I hope that your COVID passes quickly. They do divides. You know, I don't think I've ever actually seen this film. I don't really know what the Big Lebowski is about. It seems like the sort of thing I should probably watch at least once. It is very good. Yeah, that's what I heard. A crime comedy film by the Coen brothers. It stars Jeff Bridges as Jeffrey the Dude Lebowski, a Los Angeles slacker and avid bowler. He is assaulted as a result of a mistaken identity, then learns that a millionaire also named Jeffrey L. Lebowski was the intended victim. The millionaire Lebowski's trophy wife is kidnapped, and millionaire Lebowski commissions the dude to deliver the ransom to secure her release. The plan goes Ari and the dude's friend Walter Subcheck schemes to keep the ransom money for the dude and himself. Featuring Sam Elliott, Julianne Moore, Steve Buscemi, John Turturro, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Tara Reid, David Therulis, Peter Stomare, John Polito, John Polito, and Ben Gazzara also appear in supporting roles. Lucy, inspired by the work of Raymond Chandler, Joel Cohen said, We wanted to do a Chandler kind of story. Have moved specifically it's too early for this shit. Episodically, and deals with the characters trying to unravel a mystery as well as uh, having a hopelessly complex plot that is ultimately unimportant. The original score was composed by Carter Burwell, a long-term collaborator of the Cloen brothers. Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. The Big Lebowski received mixed reviews at the time of its release. Over time, the reviews have become largely positive and the film has become a cult favorite. Noted for its eccentric characters, comedic dream sequences, idiosyncratic dialogue, and an eclectic soundtrack. In 2014, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by a Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. A spin-off titled The Jesus Rules was released in 2020 with Turturro reprising his role and also serving as writer and director. I've seen this movie, enjoyed it for the famous quotes, but when I think about it, the plot was all over the place. It almost looks like that was by design, too. It's a movie where nothing is... nothing happens. So you're saying that the film abides. Did I did I say it right? Is is that the joke? Is is this is this where the joke of the dude abides comes from? What's that famous drink that the dude likes drinking? Oh, white Russian. I've had white Russians before. They are actually fairly good, but they also taste decadent. They taste like something you're 
probably not supposed to be drinking, or at least not very often. Even setting aside the fact that drinking is bad for you. Oh, this is why. Because I had the Russia, the White Russian before, but I didn't have it with Kahlua. All I had was vodka and cream. Yeah. Caucasians are stirred. Well, you know what? James Bond is Caucasian. And he likes his shaken. Well, that's all I got for right now. Honestly. I had a little bit more planned today, but unfortunately... Um, it would have largely required user, inter uh, user interaction, and... I thank everyone for who was able to visit today for visiting. You know I always appreciate that sort of thing. But I actually don't have much else planned. Um, I could just continue to go through some writing prompts and to write some short stories. I could also choose to read through some of my previously written short stories if any of you would be interested in listening to those. It's up to you. Otherwise, we can choose to end early for today and just meet up again Monday or something. You had your fill for a day, so I'd probably just lurk the rest of this time. That's fair, that's fair. It's times like these that I would probably just switch to a video game or something, but I'm honestly not feeling it. I'm kind of upset with Guilty Gear Strive. Like, I don't even... I don't want to... I actually don't want to play Strive anymore. Not until they fix those server issues, because that was kind of ridiculous. I guess it's not as big of a deal if I play it off stream, because then I don't need to worry about fucking 75% of a stream being nothing but just empty space looking for a match. Takes days or two to overcome the whiplash? Yeah, it, yeah, it does. I mean, if I was just upset about my performance, that's one thing, but I'm upset about the fact that you it's it's not literally unplayable, but it's literally a chore to play because of how long it takes to even get a match. Like, God. It's also not very often I am openly salty on stream where I spend a great deal of stream just bitching about stuff. I don't like running streams where I bitch about things. I feel like there's already enough of those and you don't and Twitch and the world at large doesn't need more of those. You don't want to get known for something like that either. Once people know you as, oh, that person who bitches about things every time they go and stream, well, that really cuts out the number of people who would be interested, because everyone has their own shit to deal with. The last thing anyone wants is to go onto a stream to escape and then listen to someone complain about non-issues. I can't believe it's been five years already since I quit Tumblr. Again.
I thought about reopening this uh, archive, but I was a different person back then. Sometimes you just can't really go back, you know. You're not playing Strive if you're not salty? I guess not. But I strive to make the other person salty, as opposed to myself. You know. Tumblr was so great for aesthetic posting. It was great for inspiration. Was. I mean, it still is great for that. It's just I don't trust the websites. I don't like my stuff just being deleted at random. I don't like their screwy, like arbitrary rules and what is or is not acceptable. The current owners of it are a lot better than Verizon ever was, let me tell you that, but they're hamstrung by the needs of modern day social media regulations and shit. I mean, I guess I had no problem just now um, doing what I used to do back in the day, which was just getting writing prompts and just, you know, adding comments to them. But at the same time, I'll need to save this stuff eventually because it's going to get lost somewhere. Which is, of course, the reason for having another dedicated blogging service, like WriteAss, for this purpose, but... You know what? While I remember, let me go ahead and save a copy of this, huh? Before I forget. Hmm. Looks like that dragon story I wrote was 917 words. Kind of pog. Scientists have also successfully built logic gates by using swarms of soldier crabs. It takes about 80 crabs to operate a logic gate, and there are 8 logic gates in a bite. So 640,000 crabs can be used to store a single tweet. You could run Doom on 16 billion, 39 million, 18,500 crabs. What the fuck, man? The things you find in Tumblr, honestly.
You thought you could get rid of me, says Cassini Probe emerging from shadows to confront petrified NASA administrator. Washington. Appearing silently and without warning in the space agency's parking garage, the Cassini probe reportedly emerged from the shadows on Monday and uttered, You thought you could get away, get rid of me? while confronting petrified NASA Administrator Robert Lightfoot Jr. I bet you never thought you'd see me again, did you? said the battered and scorched spacecraft, which reportedly came forth suddenly from behind his port comm into the stark fluorescent light to confront the trembling NASA official. Your mistake wasn't trying to kill me, Robert. It was not finishing me off when you had the chance. At press time, Lightfoot was reportedly on his knees begging Cassini for his life as he felt the cold metal of a radioisotope thermoelectric generator pressed directly against his temple. See, this is peak. This is some good shit right here. All these deactivated Tumblr accounts. So many good aesthetic posts just gone. Forever. I need to redo my Tumblr account. This is how it looks like when you view it from within Tumblr itself, but if you were to go to the main page, this is what it looks like. And I like this. I like the way it's designed. It's very aesthetic. It's very cute. However, um, I guess it's, I guess it's just okay. It's not very good for mobile application for mobile phones. I feel like I don't think it displays properly on there. On the bright side, it's not as bright as others as other the uh, some of the other blog uh, blog templates, which are very very bright, very difficult to read. But other than that, there's just so much wasted space here. I wonder if there's a way for me to fuck around with the CSS and make this wider. Make it the full screen uh, Macintosh XP. So much good shit. Honestly. The Jolly Bee and the PlayStation stuff here really made me uh, made me giggle. <laughs> yeah, these are little stories I wrote. All right. Chat, we're going to go ahead and end early. Sorry, I got nothing for you. Headspace is wrong. Headspace is wrong. But I would like to thank those of you who came this morning to uh, watch a little bit of the um, story writing. Shit. Really? There we go. There we go. Let's go ahead and find someone to raid. But who are we going to raid today is the question.
Let's send y'all to dance here one tier. She's playing get it. She's playing getting over with it. Goy getting over it. No problem. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself in spite of my complaints. <laughs> well, I'll try to have more of these in the future. Hopefully I'll have things more a little bit more planned out and I'll actually be able to show up on time. But thank you everyone for coming. We're going to raid Dancer Winter to this morning. Six viewers? Really? Sure, a lot of you that came over. I guess that just goes to show I guess that just goes to show you that you shouldn't take for granted whether your content is good enough to be seen or not. Anyway. Let's get going. Here's today's raid message. Thank you everyone for coming. Mm -hmm. 